Well, thank you for joining me for the pathway today. I wanted to do something a little bit different. Typically, I'll, I'll take the written pathway guide and, and share one of those questions or one of those thoughts. But Neil and I were having a conversation this morning before the equipping service that I thought might be worth uh, sharing with you guys too. Because we talked about this idea that, you know, some of the songs that we sing, you know, we're singing about coming out of Egypt and into the promised land. You know, we're picking up those historical pieces as metaphors for our own spiritual journey. Um, you know, sometimes we talk that way as Christ followers too. You know, I know one day I'll get to the promised land. And so we start to have kind of this one-to-one -one equation between the phrase promised land and heaven or eternal life. Um, and there's some value to that as a metaphor, uh, but sometimes that breaks down as well. And this is one of the passages, I think, where we see that break down just a little bit. And so I wanted to clarify kind of as you think through some of the things happening in Numbers, that the promised land, as the Old Testament talks about it, is not really a one-to-one -one with salvation or with heaven. It's still just a shadow of what God is going to be fulfilling through Jesus Christ. For example, we see that Moses and Aaron, who have been faithful despite their mistakes, they love God, he loves them, he's made promises to them, they don't get into the promised land, but they do get into heaven. It hadn't changed their relationship with God. It was a limited time earthly consequence that they felt, for example. Similarly, when you get past Numbers, past Deuteronomy, into the book of Joshua, when the people get to the promised land, the land that God had promised to them physically on planet Earth, they still have to fight wars. <laughs> there are still giants there. There are still idols in the land. So you see again how it's just a foreshadowing of some of the things that God has in store. Because then as Christ followers, when we think about God's promises, we do still believe that there are things that God is doing geographically uh, with a literal people of Israel, that there are pieces of that in place. But we also know there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And that our promises go far beyond anything geographical, far beyond anything that we experience in this life, but that they are ultimately fulfilled by the eternal life that he gives us through Jesus Christ by forgiveness that lasts forever, righteousness that lasts forever, that is sealed for us right now through faith in Christ by his Holy Spirit. So as you sing those songs and you hear those metaphors and as you read those passages, uh, Neil and I just thought it would be helpful to kind of know that difference, that as we're singing and as we're reading, we're thinking of even greater promises than they were thinking about the land. Because even Numbers was pointing forward to the Messiah. So come back next week. I know I mentioned it in the service, but read Numbers 21 ahead of time. I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's one of the strangest stories in the book, but by the time you get to the New Testament, it becomes a key that Jesus uses to unpack the gospel. So check out Numbers 21, and we'll see you next week.